This is Hydrogen Tap. I've redone this video so many times I'm tired of it. This is a 555 chip. Got a lot of emails asking me to show them or explain to them how they can build a timing circuit. If you want to build a timing circuit, you have to or you should be using this chip. It's called a 555. It's in almost every item you see that has some sort of timer or a clock or whatever. It uses like three or four other pieces like a die, like a resistor and a capacitor to put with it to make your timing circuit. It's very, very easy to use. You just plug it into a board like this. The hardest part is getting it in the holes there. And then it fans, that board fans it out so you can add your wires to it. You could never put a wire to the ends of that chip, to the legs. You just solder that in. If you're like me, soldering those legs into there is not the easiest job. So what they have is a stand. You solder the stand into that board, which you don't have to be as careful with, and then just plug the chip into it. I'll show you what that looks like. Again, there's a 555 chip. You can get five or six of these for a buck, maybe 10 for a dollar. The new chip upgraded is a 556, which is two of these chips together. I don't like to use that, so my pulsing system is using the two of the 555 chips. And there's the stand, which I have soldered into that, and I plug my 555 chip into it. What I'm doing here is basically explaining my interpretation of the Meyer system. I'm sure there are others out there. I'm going to be using very loose terms here. And please don't send me any email saying I'm using the word current instead of voltage or voltage instead of current. I realize I'm using loose terminology here. I'm only trying to explain how it works. This is the Myers patent. One of the pages from his patent. There's lots and lots of pages, but it all boils down to this page. This is the pulsing system. You basically have a transformer, a choke, and a diode. That's it. The capacitor, which is our plates, is what we're trying to charge. See, that's the transformer on the left. We feed in the pulsing with small or lower voltage and it multiplies the voltage coming out the right of that transformer goes to a choke the choke adds the voltage together and you get more and more voltage till finally what happens is we overload the capacitor in our case it's the plates we get a lightning strike between the two plates which goes through the water which creates hydrogen Theoretically, what we've done is use low current to do that, because all we're doing is charging the capacitor, or in our case, the plates. We're not using amperage. We're using voltage to charge it. There's the transformer. The word secondary, all that means is that's the output. The secondary either has more windings or less. If you have more windings on the secondary, that means you get more voltage out. If you have less, you get less. That's how you bring the voltage down from a higher voltage. So there's our transformer that I was using in all the tests. The secondary is on the right side. I flipped that around when I was doing the tests. Then this is the Myers patent. You can take all the other pages and throw them away. That one page is the whole patent. I don't go with the theory that he was trying to confuse people with all the other pages. I think happened is he finally got all that work done and suddenly came to this idea and suddenly realized this is the whole system. Why throw away all your work? 
this is a system. You chart, there's the blocking diode, which is nothing more than a diode. So the voltage goes through the diode. The diode keeps the voltage from going backwards. And there's a diode I have for a large system. You can get diodes in all shapes and sizes. I got a question the other day about losing current through the diode, I believe it was. You definitely lose something through it, but in our case, we don't care. There's the charging choke. It's a choke. Choke is a choke. What we're doing is we're taking the high voltage coming out of the transformer and adding it to itself, which brings the voltage very, very high. We're charging our plates or the capacitor. We call it a capacitor, but it's actually our plates that we've got in the water. We charge them to such an extent that the plates shoot the charge across through the water and we create hydrogen. And there's our capacitor. Right now it's got air in between it. If you charge that, you would have a capacitor. What we're doing is we're making the gap smaller, put that in water using the water to separate the plates. We get that quick charge on those plates and suddenly we get a breakdown which shoots a charge across it and we create hydrogen. In theory, it should work. That's what I'm building now. Good luck to us all.